Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dr. Wayne Watts. I'm the Vice President of the Board of Trustees here at Alabama a and We'd like to thank everybody for being here. As we're getting ready for this event today, y'all come on in. Come on in. As we were getting ready for this event today, I ran across a, a quote. And the quote simply says this, it says, the greatest gift given to mankind is the gift of vision, not sight. When I started thinking about that, I, how do you know that the vision you have is, well, for your life is from God? And how can you distinguish between personal ambition and divine vision? The answer to those two questions are simple. If your vision improves only your life, focuses only on your needs, and fulfills only your private dreams, that's not a divine vision. Any true vision motivated by the Creator will improve the lives of those around you. A full life is determined not by how long you live, but by how much you donated to your generation. In essence, self-service is greater than being self-serving. And we're here today celebrating the service of Dr. Andrew Huguini, Jr. and Ms. Abigail Huguini. Thank you for your service to this university. Now, with our program, we're going to have um, the presentation of the colors, and then we have the invocation by Reverend Maurice Rice. And uh, there's one change in the in the program, the welcome on occasions. Dr. Jeanette Jones uh, could not be here today due to illness, so I will read her, uh, her document at the appropriate time. All right. <laughs> so, so. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we come on this beautiful morning thanking you for your goodness, your grace shown to each of us. 
And just in case we forgot to say it, we thank you for another day. Lord, we come thanking you for Alabama A&M University. Thank you for all those who make up its leadership. Thank you for the world-class faculty and staff, and we thank you for every student. As we come, dear God, we are truly grateful for this moment of celebration and honor. Thank you for the Huguenies. Thank you for their entire family. God, it was through your divine plan that you sent them this way. And not only did you send them, but we're thankful that you placed your favor upon them as they followed the path you laid out for them. Thank you for the vision, wisdom, and tenacity of President Hugini. Thank you for the gift of love and care that you placed in Mrs. Hugini. Thank you for allowing them to stand united. Thank you for their dedication, their commitment, and most of all, their unselfish labor of love to this university and to this city. Lord, as we come together for this purpose, we pray that all those who see their names will be mindful of the responsibility they have to do as the, as the Huguenies did, and that is work to pay it forward. Lord, keep this building from all harm and danger. As students fill the room and hallways, keep them in your special care. Lord, we pray for your protection, your providence, and your power upon this facility and upon this great institution of academic excellence and upon each of us present today. We ask these and all other blessings in your mighty, majestic, and magnificent name. Let all those gathered say, Amen. Dr. Eugenie, Ms. Eugenie, this is uh, the document <laughs> from Dr. Jeanette Jones, and I'll just read it. She says, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the president of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Jerome Williams, and other members of the board, President Daniel K. Williams, the administration, faculty, staff, and students, welcome this unveiling dedication ceremony honoring the 11th president of Alabama A&M University. Dr. Andrew Huguini, Jr. and First Lady, Abigail Miriam Hamilton Huguini. We have gathered to dedicate the newest residence hall, the Andrew and Abigail Huguini Living Learning Complex, to support the next generation of students learning and academic collaboration. We are thankful to our visionary leaders who believe in Alabama A&M University's future growth and development. The building naming ceremony is one of the highest public, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the highest public honors conferred by the university. The Andrew and Abigail Houdini Living and Learning Complex is a first class facility honoring our 11th university president, Dr. Andrew Houdini Jr. and his wife. I am so pleased to have been a part of the committee to make this recommendation for two very deserving individuals who have left an inedible mark on Alabama a and m and this building shaped in the image of H will be symb symbiotic of their presence and service at the university. Dr. Hugini is a remarkable man, a transformational leader, whose life and example we have been pleased to observe. He is a man of principle, integrity, and uncommon intelligence. Dr. Hugini, 12 and a half tenure of leadership at Alabama a and University was temporary, but his exceptional service forged an enduring legacy. Andrew Hugini, Jr. entered the field of education as a high school teacher. As an academically gifted young scholar, he pursued educational excellence in the fields of mathematics and higher education with a focus on and passion over the span of half of the century. Dr. Hugini, laser focus acumen and institutional management skills have stood as an exemplary model for hundreds of academic leaders and thousands of students across a wide range of disciplines. Dr. Hugini's partner in love and life, Abigail Hamilton Hugini, is an educator and administrator in her own right, a former school principal 
who devoted the entirety of her professional career to excellence in secondary education. Miss Eugenia is a woman of substance who possesses a magnetic depth of character, personality, and charm. Today, we also honor the legacy of her gracious presence on the hill, not in her husband's shadow, but in her own right, leading right beside his side. The book of Ecclesiastes says that a good name is better than fine perfume, meaning that his long-lasting essence lingers in time, in a beautiful and in a fragrant way. The prominent display of the Huguenot names on this new edifice will permeate Normal's hills in a pleasing and perpetual acknowledgement of their contributions to the field of education at Alabama a and University and to this city, state, and nation. Congratulations to the Huguenots, and may God continue to bless you and your loved ones. Thank you. Now we'll have perfect praise uh, with Mr. Courtney Moore, and then we'll have the remarks. And um, I would like to encourage you to make the remarks brief. <laughs> follow, the <laughs> follow the program, so I won't have to be jumping up and down, and we'll go from there.
in all the earth, in all the earth, in all the earth. shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord Jesus excellent oh yes oh thy name Good morning to each of you. It is indeed an honor to stand before you and give remarks from the Board of Trustees of a person that I consider one of my very best of friends. Not only my fraternity brother, but a leader. To President Williams, Dr. and Mrs. Eugeni, special guests, community leaders, faculty, staff, alumni, students, and friends of Alabama a &M University, I greet you on behalf of the Board of Trustees and this great institution. The honor being restored upon Dr. and Mrs. Eugenie is well deserved. I personally remember the day that he was chosen. I attended the interviews. Dr. Eugenie was more or less the last one that they interviewed. They saved the best for last. We've been here for a while. I was president of the Birmingham, Alabama a and alumni chapter. And I distinctly remember that the interview concluded with the board when they went into closed door session. And I made a statement to a very good friend of mine. I said, our next president is going to be Dr. Ugini. He said, you crazy. I said, no, I'm not. I, did you notice all of them? He said, yes, I did. I said, OK. But they came out and asked, where is Dr. Ugini? That's when everybody got panicky. Why? Because Doc had left to go catch a plane. They had to go out to the airport to get Doc. A very good friend of mine walked up to me and said, Are your rabbit ear paid for you today? I said, Yes, it did. They wanted him back quickly. I was delighted that he accepted the position and that the board had the insight to select the right person for that time in our university history. He had been a fearless leader, not without sleepless nights, having to make tough choices, both personally and financially, but he did it. 
Now, look at our university. Think about it. I came here September 1961 as a freshman, as a student. Over here, all of this was cows, cotton, and some other things. Watermelon, watermelon patch wasn't on this side. Well, how do you know about it? Well, I can't tell you all that either right now. <laughs> we looked at the campus and the new building that's being renovated. Increased the faculty staff. New innovative programs. Increased endowment. The stadium and many other achievements. We understand he did not accomplish all that he wanted to by himself, but it was under his leadership and for that Alabama a and University will forever be grateful. He also had a very, very special person beside him, a devoted wife and partner who contributed to his success as well as making her own outstanding contributions. Mrs. Eugenie, Abigail Eugenie, launched and chaired the Bulldog, Bulldog Pride Committee, which the labor of love, campus-wide beautification, and, and fundraising, and many other things. She fostered relationship with students, faculty, and the community. She has already truly shown her love to the university. Now, so on behalf of the Alabama a &M University Board of Trustees, we thank you, we thank you for your contribution. Are delighted to see a permanent reminder of your collective work here at this university. God bless you and keep you. God bless you and keep you. Good things come to those who wait. And Doc, you waited. The most important thing now is you and Mrs. Eugenie enjoy life. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Unlike the board vice president and, and my boss and trustee Hackett, I'm going to follow the directive of the divorce vice chair, which is to be brief and yield the balance of my time. Uh, uh, Dr. Swoop gave me some comments, which I'll try to stick to those, and I ask her to do that sometimes so that I will. Uh, but to our elected officials here present, uh, we have a member of our state senate, we have our mayor and a member of our house of representatives. Please give them a warm round of applause for taking time out of their busy schedule to come and share in this occasion to all of our higher education partners, to our friends and family members of the Bulldog Nation, thank you for being here. Um, and I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to publicly, in this setting, reprimand Dr. Andrew Hugini Jr. and pay him back for all of the reprimands he gave me for 12 years. <laughs> the most common theme that we have in our discussion and dialogue is shut up Daniel. <laughs> and I will forever remember that because, you know, coming out of the academic enterprise, we debate, we discuss. Well, once he got to be president, he didn't want to be a faculty member anymore. And he didn't want to debate and discuss. And the more I would push him, the more he would shut me down. And so now I'm reprimanding him because I think he's taking this retirement thing a little bit too serious. Uh, I call his phone and he won't answer. And so you know what I do then. I call the real boss. Not only do I get an answer, I get a quick call 
back. So this serves as an official reprimand because he is still a professor on sabbatical. So thank you, Miss Abigail, for answering the phone and getting him on the phone for us. But I don't have to say how I feel about them or what I think about them. Uh, if they don't know, they ought to know. Uh, it needs no mere words of expression. Uh, we've had years of experience together. We've gone through much. We have suffered much, but we've also accomplished much. So on behalf of Dr. Jerome Williams, the chairman of our board of trustees, and this board of trustees, and uh, the faculty senate representative, Dr. Jeanette Jones, and the university family, I'm always honored to have this opportunity to pay honor and tribute to an educator and leader who has not only provided exemplary service to Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University, but who has represented the HBCU community at large very well and in stellar fashion. He served as the chairman of the SWAC, as well as the chairman of, of other entities that are representative of the HBCU community. Thirteen years ago, he and his wife arrived here and there were many challenges. Some of them accreditation related, some financial related, enrollment was declining. There was untold millions of deferred maintenance, which uh, Senator Govain, we still have untold millions of <laughs> deferred maintenance. Uh, lack of human and capital assets and an erosion of support and morale was very low. But, after much work, sacrifice, and suffering, uh, the first thing being figure out a way to get people off furlough. Give him a round of applause for that. The second thing is figuring out a way to bring salaries up to some average that was competitive among our peers. Uh, our financial position strengthened fundraising increase, alumni giving increase, research dollars increase, deferred maintenance has been addressed. Bulldog Pride was implemented. That was Miss Eugenie now, not Dr. Eugenie. So give her a round of applause for that. Uh, Legacy Lake was created. Miss Eugenie, give her a round of applause for that. Uh, construction of new building, campus of beautification, it goes on and on and on along with the normal light walkway. The quad, Miss Eugenie, give her a round of applause for that. Uh, but also, finally, what's most important to the alums is that we won a SWAC championship and a national championship. So give him a round of applause for that. There are many things that were accomplished, and we thank him for his service. We thank him for his service at South Carolina State, and he's one of the few HBCU presidents that have served at two 1890 land grants, but also having two buildings named after him at 1890 land grant institutions. That's a remarkable accomplishment. Please give him and his family a round of applause. I'd just like to say thank you for your service, sir. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your example. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for your steadfastness. steadfastness. Thank you for your legacy. Thank you for your endurance. Thank you for your discipline and your example. Thank you, thank you, thank you. One thing I learned from the president's investiture was, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Sorry if I got a little loud, but I had to wake y'all up. I'm very excited to stand before you today on this great day on the hill here at Alabama A&M University. It is indeed a pleasure to stand before you as we honor yet again the Huguenies a couple so deserving. President Emeritus Andrew Hugini Jr. and former First Lady Abigail Miriam Hamilton Hugini, thank you again for your leadership and service to this institution of higher learning. 
I stand here today representing your cabinet. Congratulations. You have been blessed to have a building named after you on this campus where you have sacrificed 12 years of hard work to transform this institution. You both played an instrumental role in the construction, decorating, and furnishings of the Andrew and Abigail Hugini Living Learning Complex. You made sure that this new residence hall met the Bulldog Pride standard. Furthermore, you've been instrumental in the accreditation and development of new degree programs, key research awards, university distinctions, recruitment and enrollment, and the list goes on and on. God-fearing, visionary leaders and servants, a faithful husband and a faithful wife, a devoted mother and father, and amazing grandparents. Not only are you those things, but you are also nurturers, for you have embraced each of us as cabinet members and provided wisdom, professional development, mentoring, most important prayers, and overall love. Dr. and Mrs. Hugini, you have touched all of our lives and have given tirelessly of your time, talent, and your resources. Someone's going to say something about me being emotional, but that's okay. We wouldn't be where we are today if you had invested in our careers. Naming this residence hall after the Huguenis is very deserving. Dr. and Mrs. Huguini, you remind me a lot of my parents. Both of you are very focused, individuals, willing to work very hard with the goal of making a big difference in this world. You are both very detail-oriented and like things to be done on time and in a very specific way. You both are very compassionate and truly care about others and their well-being. It has been a pleasure to watch and observe the both of you interact and lead this institution for over 12 years, as you are both out-of-the-box thinkers. You have taught us so many leadership skills and lifelong lessons, and I just want to say thank you. You both believe in celebrating one's successes and achievements. On the other end, when Richard shows up and Mama Hugini shows up, they know how to correct you when you've done something wrong. But the important part here is they correct you in everything that they do. They do it with grace, and they do it with dignity. Thank you, Dr. and Mrs. Hugini, for all that you've done and continue to do for this institution and its students. I will continue to hold on to the fish philosophy that you shared with us so often. Choose your attitude. You can choose the way you do your work, even if there's not a choice about the work itself. Choosing the right attitude for the day should become a daily routine. This will provide you the energy and the faith you need to guide you through each day. Every day you have an opportunity to decide for yourself what attitude you will have. Lastly, Dr. Hugini, and we've all, I've always shared this with you when I sat in on your interview, you were asked the question, how would you deal with difficult situations and conflicts and challenges? And you said, as long as you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move any mountain. Congratulations on the naming of the Andrew and Abigail Hugini Living Learning Complex. Congratulations again on your retirement. And Akila and the grandkids, I blame you. But no, congratulations for having your dad and your mom back because it looks like retirement is treating them both very well. Thank you. Well, I'm back. <laughs> Thought I 
can uh, May 6th has been a, a month away, basically, so I'm glad to be back. Uh, to, of course, President Wims, President Emeritus Hugini, former First Lady Hugini, Board of Trustees, President's Cabinet, elected officials, and if I could do a special shout out, my mom, who is also an elected official, could raise her hand. She represents District 7 in the Montgomery County Board of Education. Is she, there she is in the back. Give a special shout out to that wonderful lady back there that raised me. Um, and of course, faculty, staff, and all other dignitaries that are here with us today. Um, I am Austin Andrew Smith, a Spring 22 graduate of the illustrious Alabama A&M University with a Bachelor's of Science in Civil Engineering, hailing from the capital city of Montgomery, Alabama, and I served as the 2021-2022 Student Government Association Executive President. And so this morning, we honor the great and honorable president and gracious and tenacious First Lady who have served this institution for 12 years with the name unveiling of the Andrew and Abigail Hugini Living and Learning Complex. I do have to say this, while you do have a dormitory at South Carolina State University, the best one, in my opinion, which will be unveiled today, is and forever will be located on good old 4900 Meridian Street North or our great Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. But in all seriousness, I thank you both for your service, your mentorship, your hospitality that you both showed to me during my term. I finally have a glimpse of what retirement looks like. So we can kind of, okay, I know I'm young. I have a far way to go. Don't all laugh at once. So now I can kind of relate on that aspect just a little bit. My sophomore and junior year were spent living in the now Andrew and Abigail Hugini Living and Learning Complex, or when we were, back, back in the day, when we were here, we called it New Dorms. I'll forever be a resident of actually the Andrew side. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hugini. I tried to be on the best side, but I had to go over there. But of course, I want to extend congratulations, uh, of course, to you both. It is so well deserved. Uh, I'll remember. I will always cherish the numerous times where I have sat within the president's office. Of course, going in for my daily dose of cookies and orange juice that Dr. Swoop would always patronize me for. Yes, I'm gonna get you today because I've been waiting for this moment for one entire year, and so I got you today. And of course, to Dr. Soup, would, I, when Dr. Soup asks me anything, I cannot say no. And so when she asked me in April, would I come back and give remarks on behalf of the very best students, I said, well, of course. And now mind you, if I had said no, then we might have had some problems. I don't think she would have ever spoken to me another day of my life. But I'm so glad that I came back to be here and witness this amazing day and to, of course, once again represent, as you'd always say, sir, the very best students that exist anywhere in this nation, the students of Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. So I thank you all, wish you all safe travels, and congratulations. To President Wims, members of the Board of Trustees, cabinet members, faculty, staff, and friends of our university, and to our honorees, Dr. Hugini and Mrs. Hugini, greetings. It is a long-standing tradition to name university buildings after those whose record and extraordinary service and accomplishments have made a lasting impact on the universities they serve and have served. Today we honor Dr. Andrew Hugini Jr. and Mrs. Abigail Hamilton Hugini on the naming of the Andrew and Abigail Hugini Living Learning Complex. I am honored as a past member of the Bulldog Pride Committee to bring remarks on behalf of the committee. 
I had the privilege of working with Mrs. Hugini since 2010. We worked together on special projects and events, campus canvassing, the Normal Light Walkway Project, and dancing with the First Lady and the President. Mrs. Hugini was the chair of the Bulldog Pride Committee. The committee was an all-campus organization made up of faculty, staff, community leaders, alumni, and other supporters. In Bulldog Pride, we fostered campus beautification and campus pride, all while sustaining the perpetuation of the legacy of Dr. William Hooper Council. One of the many special projects within Bulldog Pride was campus canvassing. In campus canvassing, we would visit university dorms and we would speak to the students about Bulldog Pride and we also showed them how to demonstrate their school pride. So today's naming ceremony is quite fitting. In this testament, we will all know that after today, that the Andrew and Abigail Hugini Living Learning Complex is truly what we want to see for our students as they walk these halls and reside in this community. On a personal note, as I travel on Meridian Street and I see the Andrew and Abigail Hugini Living Learning Complex, I will smile because I will remember how very fortunate I was to be a part of this special occasion and as a part of this institutional transformation that will continue long after we're gone. At this time, I would like for any past Bulldog Pride members to please stand and remain standing. <laughs> Dr. Hugini and Mrs. Hugini, the dedication of this residence hall with your name on it solidifies the example of your hard work, your commitment, your love and care for our students. We are forever grateful for your service to Alabama A&M University, and for this, we say thank you. Good morning. Dr. and Mrs. Hugini, on behalf of the citizens of House District 19 specifically, but on behalf of our legislative delegation, want to say thank you. And what an honor it is at any time when you are in the area where someone considers you worthy enough to name anything after you, especially a building. And when we think of this building and think of the students here at Alabama A&M, we are always going to be aware, and hopefully they will be made aware, of the contributions that each of you have made to this campus. It is my honor to serve as a legislator for this area. And I want to say those legislators, Representative, no, I'm sorry, Senator Sam Gavan, would you please stand, who is a, a great partner. I am fortunate to work with because we have a partnership as a legislative delegation where we find ourselves working together. And one of the things that Senator Gavan has already said, that we needed to find other legislators who are going to work in that same vein that, to make sure that Alabama A&M gets to be at the top of the budget as opposed to the second place or third place in the budget. So my commitment to both of you as we continue to work, congratulations on the naming of this building, but a commitment to have you to understand that we will continue to work forward, look forward, to make sure those ideas and funding will certainly be continued in the very positive way. Thank you for your service, thank you for your commitment, and thank you for all that you've done to elevate the level of Alabama A&M University as President and First Lady, thank you. It's almost noon, good afternoon almost. Uh, to each of you, thank you for being here and thank you to Dr. Hugini and the 
former first lady or are still first lady, uh, thank you for what y'all have done for this university. You look at this facility here, and this facility reflects the progress that was made in the past 13 years. It reflects what we have been able to do with Alabama A&M, what we have been able to do with this university. But it's also, it's a foundational block and it's a foundational piece about what will happen in the future. We will build on this facility right here and we will bring in more students and more students who will come and come through the educational process and hopefully live right here in Huntsville, Alabama and work right here in Huntsville, Alabama because we need the workforce. And because of facilities like this, more and more will come, more and more will stay. You have made a great, you've been a great benefit to the city of Huntsville and we thank you for this. It's a very fitting honor to name this for you. This shows the progress of the past, but also shows the foundational blocks of what the future will look like at Alabama A&M. Thank you for all that y'all have done for our community. You have made a very special place in our hearts. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, to President Williams, Dr. and Mrs. Hugeni, members of the board, to all the elected officials in the house today, I bring you greetings on behalf of Commissioner Violet Edwards, who is the commissioner of District 6. Um, Alabama A&M sits in the heart of her district, and we work directly with the university and has worked with the university on many occasions. I would just like to say something that most people have already said, but it is truly um, something that I hold dear is about the Bulldog Pride Committee. I can remember being a student here as the Hugenies were coming in. I was getting ready to graduate at that time. Um, and I can remember sitting in a new school of business as Dr. Andrew Hugeni so eloquently interviewed for the position of president. At that time, several of the students um, in SGA, we knew that he was the, he was the one. And almost immediately after he was chosen as president, Mrs. Hugani got together a group of students and said, this is what I want to do. There is, the morale is low and I want the students to be involved. And she birthed the Bulldog Pride Committee. I can remember her telling me in a meeting that campus, uh, student life on campus should be romantic. You should have a romantic learning experience. And I could not really imagine what that truly meant as a student. <laughs> but as she went further into it, she said, Sam, there are no benches around here. You're supposed to be able to sit on the quad and read and study. You're not limited to just being in the classroom and studying. Your study should take place all over this campus. You should be able to sit under the tree. You should be able to pack a lunch from the, uh, from the calf, bring it out and eat, study in groups, and have a good time. There were no lighting on the campus. She went around and made sure that there was lighting. Any um, retaining wall that she saw, she said, oh no, that has to change. That has to change, and it did immediately. <laughs> I can remember we, we asked several people in student affairs, hey, we would like to put paw prints around the, um, around the quad on the street. Nobody wanted to do it. We asked Mrs. Eugenie. She said, oh, yes, it got to happen. <laughs> and she did that. And so I really want to say thank you to Dr. and Mrs. Eugenie for your tenacity and your vision. Um, even at that time, you all came here and you had a lot of vision as to what you wanted to do to bring to this campus and enhance the university. And I'm grateful that I've just, even though it was a brief stint, I had an opportunity to be here under your leadership. And I thank you for everything that you all have done for the university and everything that uh, you all have put in Dr. Williams, who I'm sure will carry that legacy to even greater heights. Thank you and thank you again. Good morning, everyone. Come on, come on. You 
to talk to, so it's fine. All right, I am truly honored on behalf of the family to, for this dedication and unveiling of the Andrew and Abigail Hugini Living Learning Complex. But to be honest, my parents have put way too much pressure on me. I mean, way too much pressure. You know how they say, like, the next generation is supposed to outdo your parents and be better than the generation before? Like, they literally have a living and learning complex named after them. That is, like, way too much pressure. How am I supposed to compete with that? So we're going to maybe skip this generation, and we're going to see what Amir, Nala, and Kalel can do. <laughs> but on a serious note, the, the legacy that my parents have built over their lifetime is something to truly marvel over. By putting God first in every step of their way, their lives have truly been blessed. One of my favorite quotes related to legacy is from Maya Angelou, who said, I've, ne I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. My parents have always prided themselves on treating everyone equally. Through their faith and belief, they always try to find the good in people and lend a helping hand or guidance along the way. As my mom says, you never know what a person is going through, so you always make sure you treat them with kindness and respect. My parents have dedicated their lives on the importance of educating young people and understanding that the foundation of making an impact on the world is through the lessons you learn and education you receive along the way. This is why it's so fitting that on a college campus of higher education, they will have a building named in their honor. Mom and Dad, on behalf of the entire Hamilton and Hugini family, on this historic honor, we congratulate you. We love you, and we thank you for all that you have done for our family. Thank you. Greetings, everybody. Before I do my comments, my remarks, I need to say everybody has made my speech. So I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to carry forth, but I spent four days trying to write this, so I'm going to read it. So it is an honor for me to have been asked to do comments and remarks about two people who are very, very dear to my family and to me, and that's Andrew and Abby Hugini. As a friend, I get the chance to say Andrew and Abby. As fellow South Carolinians, our time dates back to when we were undergraduates at South Carolina State. And, and it was during the time when they had the race riots where we had two South Carolina State students and one high school student who died, and several students who were injured. We also had Lyceum programs where renowned artists came in. And one of them that I always think about is Duke Ellington. He came and did his sacred concert, and I have his autograph. So that's, a, that's something that's important to me. We even had a time where uh, Black Power researched, and Stokely Carmichael was on campus. But throughout all of that, we grew, we matured, we flourished under Dr. and Mrs. Maceo Nance. And they remind me, if you don't know them, but I do, they are like the Nances. The way they care for people, the way they are concerned about people. And it's not just one group, it's everyone. So here goes my comments. In 2007, I saw them again. So we were separated for God knows how many years. But the great thing is I was standing outside James I. Dawson when they came up. And that made me grin, laugh, happy, want to do a, a dance because I had somebody here from South Carolina State. Up until that point, there's no alumni chapter here from South Carolina State. It was me and Lieutenant Colonel uh, Hayward. Can't make a chapter with two people. So consequently, we still don't have one, but I still feel good that South Carolina State is represented here in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. 
Since, those, since that particular day, I've watched them grow and uh, embrace the university and take on responsibilities and, and succeed in them. Just looking around the campus, you can see how the, how the Huguenies have put their mark on the campus. From the renovation of old and existing buildings to, to building new buildings on campus. From making our students feel that they are the most important thing on this campus to remembering and erecting a fitting memorial to the founder, uh, Dr. William Hooper Council. There have been programs geared towards student growth and retention, the trip that they would take throughout the state of Alabama, trying to encourage students that this is where they need to be. Office protocol, campus beautification, legacy lake, remembering and recognizing the first ladies of Alabama A&M University. Uh, such programs as scholarships, the uh, first ladies luncheon that I was drafted to serve on for 13 years was another one of the programs that was a highlight of the time that they have been here. So much they have brought to the university. I can't mention it all. But most of all, they brought a lot to me and my family by being part of our lives every day. My grandson loves them, and they adopted him as, as, as their godchild, and he's, he's here today because of that. But here we go. H, humble, <laughs> church-going people who ultimately have the interests and love of the university and its students and in their hearts, that's how they feel about all of them. And they never allowed others to, you, undermine their mission here in helping the university move forward in the 21st century. Start here, go anywhere. They were, G, genuinely gracious and giving of their time, talents, not only in the academic arena, but in the community and the churches, and especially with family and with friends. They developed, I, innovative and inspiring ways to garner support for the university, such as Dancing with the President and First Lady, where all people who came were looking forward to watch Andrew cut a rug, and Abby tried to keep up with him. <laughs> they also provided in nurturing. They nurtured the students who needed a pep talk or a word of encouragement. They weren't just the president and first lady. They were mom and dad, a smile, a kind word, a pat on the back, a hug, and if they needed reprimanding, they got that too. And they truly, E, embraced the bulldog spirit in their actions, in showing support for faculty, staff, students, the community, and various capacities. If you ever saw them out in public, you would see maybe Andrew with that A&M hat on. Abby always had on something maroon and white. I think she, I think she just got all the maroon and white in Huntsville because every time I went shopping for anything, I couldn't find anything. <laughs> but nevertheless, they represented the university. They were proud to be bulldogs at Alabama A&M University. So why not name this edifice after them? It was a perfect decision. And as people ride down Meridian Street, and walk over the campus, they can look up and see Hugini Building, named for this dynamic duo, who gave their all that thou might shine. Congratulations on this well-deserved tribute to greatness. I love you.
Good afternoon. Would other board members in the audience please join me? Dr. Hugini and Mrs. Hugini, congratulations on this absolute wonderful recognition. Both of you are so deserving of your name being placed on this beautiful residence. Therefore, as Secretary of the Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University Board of Trustees, I would like to present to you the official certificate of naming. Be it known by all that the structure on the campus of Alabama A&M University, known as the New Student Residence Hall, has been officially named the Andrew and Abigail Hugini Living Learning Complex by the power vested in the Board of Trustees of Alabama A&M by the State of Alabama, given under the hands and the seal of the University's authorized Board of Trustees, off Board of Trustees officers, this second day of June 2022, signed Trustee Jerome Williams, President Pro Tem, Attorney Tiffany Johnson Cole, Secretary. Mayor, we have about 10 minutes. I had good morning on my speech. <laughs> good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> to the members of the Alabama A&M Board of Trustees, elected officials, President Wims, administrators, alumni, community supporters, faculty, staff, and the best students that you can find anywhere. When we arrived in 2009, all sorts of things went through our minds. We were in Alabama. <laughs> what would be the trajectory of our lives here? After 12 and a half years, I can truly say that we have met some of the most wonderful people who have transformed our lives. Our families were concerned, but we knew that we were in the right place when we visited St. John AME Church under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Homer L. McCall and Mrs. Mabel McCall. And sitting next to us was the oldest member now in the church at 103, Sarah Granny Bell. I knew right then that we would be okay. Even up until this very moment, we have fellowship and grown our faith with a wonderful congregation and pastor. To the other faith leaders in the community that we have grown to love, thank you for your financial support and spiritual support. Like Brenda Davis just said, I have, my speech has already been echoed several times, but because I prepared it, I'm going to give it. <laughs> and most of it is just in recognition of the persons who really helped during this period of time. Shortly after arriving on campus, the level of comfort that I felt at St. John continued at Alabama A&M. Within a few months, some wonderful persons who helped me to develop the Alabama A&M Bulldog Pride Committee on campus came to be the group that actually transformed 
Alabama A&M for the future and beyond. Establishing the Quad, the Normal Life Walkway Project, with initial funds from the Home Depot Retool Your School Project, which we have won four times, and an endowment value over $150,000 to help students earn degrees are just a few of the many projects of Bulldog Pride. The First Lady Scholarship Committee led in a scholarship endowment that netted over $300,000 with the support of the Aramark Dining Facilities under the leadership of Ms. Felicia Wilson and the Southeastern Region of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority under the leadership of Mrs. Adrian P.K. Washington, who is in the audience today. And many of you who made significant contributions throughout the years. Legacy Lake that has been mentioned. Presidents cannot do it alone. And Andrew will say that. <laughs> so they need someone uh, to help them along the way, not to take their role as president, but to help in aiding the success of the presidency. So Legacy Lake was established in honor of those first ladies. We are also partner with Be The Match, an organization along with the Greater Huntsville chapter of the Lynx Incorporated to help save lives through bone marrow transplants. So not only do we care about the students and faculty and staff at Alabama A&M, we also showed our support in the community. Our students are involved in many service projects all over Huntsville and Madison County. And they were recognized as having one of the highest voter turnout rate among colleges and universities in the 2020 election. Our AAM alumni have been very supportive at, with financial contributions and serve as ambassadors for our students. Our faculty and staff have transformed students into productive members of society, therefore helping them to improve the quality of lives for themselves and their families. There is so much more than I can say about the time we spent here. It has been a very rewarding experience for us. We have seen the fruits of our labor, but we also recognize that it took the entire village to be able to celebrate this naming event today. A special thanks to the AA, AAMU Board of Trustees under the leadership of Dr. Jerome Williams and the chair of the naming committee, Dr. Jeanette Jones, my sister in Christ, my sorority sister, and Link sister, for, who thought of the idea to include me in the naming. I will always be grateful to the board and to Dr. Jones. Last but not least, a special thanks to our entire family and my Risky Women Investment Group sisters and friends, although in South Carolina, who gave of their resources, time, and prayers to support us during this time at Alabama A&M University. God bless each of you, and I pray that each student who stays in this residence hall and the staff will cherish as many good memories that President Emeritus Andrew Hugini and I have. And we will hold dear to our hearts the memories we have experienced here until we can no longer do that. So for each of you in attendance today, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And we will always remember each of you. Thank you. Good afternoon to President Wims, the members of the Board of Trustees, the elected officials, the faculty and staff, our alumni, community supporters, and of course, the very best students that exist anywhere in this nation, the students of Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. This is another great day in the life of Alabama A&M. Abigail Hugini and I, along with our family, thank you for sharing this very special day with us. As we reflect on the past, each of us think about our professional beginnings and our careers. At that point, we have no idea what the future holds for us. 
We have many dreams and we have many aspirations, but we hope that our future is the one that's described in Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. For Abby and I, we can truly say that God provided us plans of hope and a great future. A future that landed us here at Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University, where we completed an almost 50 plus year educational journey. Of all the places that we could have chosen to cap off our career, Alabama A&M University was indeed the best place. We made many new friends here for life, and we found a committed faculty, staff, alumni, community supporters, and of course, great students. And we saw the completion of this facility, this student residence hall, that has a very significant place in our tenure here, but also is represented of our administration being student-centered and putting students first. But it's also a reminder that when we arrived here, this country was in the midst of the Great Recession, which wreaked havoc on the entire country, and Alabama a and University was not exempted. It required many sacrifices, as President Wims mentioned, everything from furloughs to unfortunate layoffs. What were we going to do to survive? It required many, many sacrifices. When the financial condition of the university had improved enough to qualify for the loan for the construction of this building, it represented a turning point, a turning point, and we knew then that this university was on an upward trajectory. From there, the rest is history. Thus, this building represents not only the first new construction under the Huguenot administration, but the beginning of the transformation. A transformation led by a dedicated and committed team. I really never thought of myself, quote, as unquote, as president, but I instead thought of myself as the facilitator, the enabler, the leader who empowered the team to accomplish the vision. We know that there is no I in team. There is no I in team. It's all about empowering individuals to achieve much. And I'm blessed that the team did just that. I got out of the way and allowed them to do their thing. And we can look around the campus and see the results of that. So today we officially celebrate their collective accomplishments. I want to personally thank the members of the Board of Trustees and the leadership of Dr. Jerome Williams for bestowing this honor on me. I want to thank President Wims for allowing this formal unveiling program to take place. Thanks to Dr. Jeanette Jones and the naming committee for their recommendation, and particularly for including my wife Abigail in the name. We have shared almost 50 years of marriage working together and supporting each other. Thus, I am honored to share the name of this building with her. She really deserves it. She was by far the hardest working first lady that I have ever, ever known. Alabama A&M University was her full-time, non-paid job. Thank you so very much, dear, for your love and for your support. I want to take the time to thank all of the program participants, all of you that are in attendance here today, and to, of course, all of the divisions. I would be remiss if I didn't express special thanks to the HBCU Capital Access Program that made funding for this and other projects on this campus possible. To our members of the Board of Trustees that are here, Dr. Wayne Watts, 
and she'll get me, but I can do this now, Judge Tiffany Johnson Cole, Mr. John Hackett. I saw former uh, board member Blankenship, who is here. Thank you very much, Lucian, for your presence here. To our pastor, our servant leader at St. John AME Church, Pastor Wright, Dr. Melinda Wilson Swoop, who we have adopted as our adopted daughter. To my homegirl, Representative Laura Hall, thank you, Senator Govan, for being present today. Mayor Tommy Battle, for your leadership here in the Huntsville area. To Ms. Sandra Stubbs, Mr. Austin Andrew Smith. <laughs> to Mr. Sam Green, I remember you so well, Mr. Green. Thank you for those comments and thank you for represent, representing Ms. Violet Edwards today. To Brenda and Bill and DJ, thank you for your presence as well. To all of the members of St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church, and all of those persons, please stand. All of St. John members. Ms. Riz Renee Knight for that wonderful rendition of my tribute. To Mr. Courtney Moore, thank you very much, Mr. Moore, for being a part of this program. To my, our dear friends of another church that is First Missionary Baptist Church, that is to Dr. and Reverend Dr. and Ms. Riz Julia Struggs, thank you for uh, not only your friendship and your prayers, but being here today to be a part of this program. Mr. Brian Ship, where are you, Mr. Ship? Probably out somewhere, Mr. Ship. Uh, so appreciative of all of the work that you continue to do for Alabama a and University, the Division of Finance and Facilities, to the Division of Electronic Media Communications, Mrs. Felicia Wilson and Aramont Food Services, to our Department of Public Safety, Mr. Jerome St. Jones, sir, on the job. Thank you for your presence here today. <laughs> Housing and Student Affairs, uh, because of course this is a part of uh, your division. Will all of the faculty of this great university please stand? All our faculty that's here today. Thank you, faculty members. <laughs> staff members, all staff members. Alumni of Alabama A&M University. Retirees of Alabama A&M University. Our community supporters, all persons representing the community, would you please stand, uh, all community supporters. The very best students that exist anywhere in this nation, the students of Alabama a University, would you please stand? All of our students. And of course, I want to thank uh, my daughter, Dr. Akila Hugini Elmore, for being present today, along with our three adorable full-time grandchildren. Amir, would you stand up, please? Amir, that's Amir. He's the oldest. Miss Nyla, come this way so we can see you, my dear. This is Nyla. And somewhere there is Kal-El. Where are you? Uh, I think Kal-El is on the outside. So we appreciate so much their coming and being here. May, again, many thanks to all of you for your presence today. I know that there are going to be several other ribbon cutting uh, ceremonies. So Mr. President, please invite uh, Abby and I back so that we can witness these great accomplishments on this campus. God bless each of you and God bless Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. Go Bulldogs! We'll close out with Pastor Scruggs, and then we're going to ask that you will quickly move outside so we can try to beat the rain, um, because it is definitely on its way. But Pastor Scruggs?
Let us pray the prayer of benediction. And now we thank you, O God, for your faithful servants, Andrew and Abigail Hugini, for whom this building is named. We praise you for their commitment to academic excellence and for their love for students, colleagues, and friends. We honor you for blessing them to inspire and bless thousands of lives on their educational journey. We also give you thanks for inspiring them to be champions of freedom, justice, and equality for all people. Now continue to bless them during these days of retirement. Keep your hand upon them, your Holy Spirit within them, and your hedge around them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.